Namaste, Shalom, and welcome to Dharma Explorers. Dharma Explorers is a series of conversations with prominent personalities for strong supporters of dharmic principles, but were not born in Hindu household. I'm your host, Jay Bansal. I'm affiliated with the Vishwa Hindu Parishad of America, where I'm serving as the Vice President of Education. Today, I'm very pleased and indeed honored to welcome as our panelist, a very dear friend, John Perry. John, a very warm welcome to you. Namaskar, namaste, always a pleasure to be with my company. Thank you, thank you. So John, before we get into the various topics we want to uh, discuss today, let me uh, give our audience a brief uh, background of yours and also set the context for our conversation. So John Perry was uh, born in a middle-class Beni Israeli uh, Marathi-speaking Jewish family in Mumbai. He was a journalist with the Indian Express and was assigned to Israel. During the emergency period in India, the Indira Gandhi government took many steps to throttle the media, uh, which included stoppage of salaries for journalists stationed abroad. This prompted John to take Israeli citizenship, where he worked with the Associated Press and LL, uh, Israeli airline. He migrated to the United States in uh, 1979 and ha has edited uh, many different newspapers, including News India Times, India Worldwide, and also produced some television and radio shows for the benefit of Indian community settled here. He was honored both by the New Jersey State Assembly as well as the U.S. Congress for strengthening the ties between the United States and India. He has been very active in the Jewish world. He is the founder of International Organization of Beni Israel Hindu Jewish Friendship Association and India Israel Friendship Association. He has also served as the Vice President of the Nigrep a well-known Jewish service organization. He is 80 now, continues to write and work to strengthen the bonds between Hindu and Jewish communities, as well as between India and Israel. A little known fact, John accompanied the late Shimon Peres, the former foreign minister of Israel, when he traveled to India in 1972 to establish diplomatic ties between the two countries. John, uh, wonderful background. I think it's very relevant for us to be talking about India and Israel relationships and uh, Hindu and Jewish community relationships. And I'm really looking forward to our conversation. Uh, it's very close to me, Jai. It's a pleasure. And it's nice of you to invite me. Oh, wonderful. So, John, uh, why don't we start with your early years of growing up in India? Just tell us in your, in, in your own words about the when, where, family, you know, the surrounding community and so on and so forth. Uh, certainly, Jay. I was, as you said, I was uh, born in a middle class family. Uh, my name wasn't John, it was Yohanan. And I'll tell you the story behind Perry. The family name isn't Perry. My grandfather, uh, he came from a village called Pezari in Raigad uh, district. And uh, we, Ben Israel, we took names from the villages we came. So if you are from Pezari, we were Pezarkar. If you are from Tetal village to Talkar and from Naugav to Naugavkar. So I grew up in a big building. There were about 200 tenants and mostly Jewish and Hindu. We had two Christian and one Muslim. But we grew up in such a way that we never felt that we are different from each other because of religion. So much so that, you know, when they would have the Ganpati in their houses, the Hindu neighbors, we would join them. I know all the pujas and the Satyanaran puja and all, and I'm proud about it. It made me a good Jew. And same with them, just like the Satyanaran puja, we have a Elio and Nabi ceremony. Well, just like Satinaran Puja, we make up pohas, the fruit and five fruits, and we sing and we pray and they would join us. And uh, 
the way it was is you know we had the tap water coming in the morning and evening and we knew each other's festivals so if it was a jewish festival our neighbors would tell our you know the jewish neighbors it is your festival today first you fill up the water and then we'll do it so that's the kind of relationship we had most of the hindu and jewish festivals they fall approximately on the same day and the holiest of holy is the yom kippur where they have the hindu uh, have a festival where they stand by the roadside and they give leaves kasona gya so as soon as they would see our men women children coming returning from the synagogue they would move by the side and they would stop till our you know uh, the community pass by so that's the kind of relationship we had uh, they knew exactly when we had a certain festival called birdat uh, sun we used to we had named the hebrew fe- festival in marathi names and my mother used to make you know the uh, wala wal it's called birda and it would taste very nice for some reason on those days and they would tell my mother before and you know they would say hana bai tum sa udya san hai when you make it make sure keep little for us so this is the kind of relation this is the kind of my india my bharat that i come from and when it comes to my childhood as i said my name was not john the best education was in the english school so at the age of 5 my mother took me to st joseph high school so she says the name is yohanan Uh, pedarkar and you know all that it didn't chime so i studied in a marathi school so that's where i learned deva tuza so jay jay kar that's the first song i learned and I- i'm sure you all understand the meaning of it and i still sing it today and then she took me again on the june of the next year and she just said john perry and i got admission but you know looking back uh, i missed my childhood i miss my neighbors and uh, with all the money and the house and everything i miss the hindu majority people uh, i'll be talking a lot about it about anti sentiment because in india we felt as a jewish community though we adopted their language their way of living not only we were equal but they, we were treated more than equal in india and that's because of the teaching of hinduism jay thank you thank you john it's as a hindu it's uh, um, very very fine for me to hear you say that talk a little bit about your professional life and then move to israel and finally to the united states yeah what happened is uh, after you know getting a first class in intersind in saint xavier those days i was admitted to nair hospital but i mentioned i come from a middle class family so father was unable to do it so i continued bs bsc as it was called then microbiology chemistry but to help my parents i would cycle in the evening go uh, you know cover sports football hockey and uh, report to the free press journal later the indian express while continuing the junior and senior bsc i'm saying that because that's the way i got into uh, the field of journalism so after passing bsc while studying law uh, i joined the free press later the indian express and uh, i was very close to ramnath goenka the editor mm-hmm. of the indian express and uh, i was chosen by frank moraes in 1970 to cover uh, israeli politics and reports from jerusalem and tel aviv so i was posted there at two months and later on emergency and they stopped uh, the salary and there i was forced basically i didn't want to return to india and things were bad in india so i thought of just staying back and took the nationality uh and then uh, then you moved to the united states that that's right uh, we had two children over there two sons were born there mm. uh, i saw action in the yom kippur war 
we have a very big community. I mean, in terms of Israel, you know, it's a big community. We have about 85,000 Bene Israelis. We are the Marathi speaking uh, Jews of India. Then there are the Cochinis, the one that comes from Cochin, but they're smaller in number and the Baghdadi Jews. And uh, it, it was fun. It was like being in India while in Israel. There were, you know, Marathi dramas, Hindi movies, Marathi publication. And as such, our food, our behavior is more like the Maharashtrian than anyone else. I think we uh, touched on this a uh, little bit earlier anyway. Um, but uh, you're a member of a tiny minority. So given this, that, you know, it's a really tiny minority living and working and in a this this uh, big sea of uh, Hindu community. Tell us about the inter-community relationships. For a, I'll give you an example. Uh, whenever I go to a India, apart from the school of specially able in Kalamboli of Panwell, I'm attached to Beth El Synagogue in Panwell. Uh, that's about 184 years old. Mm. And uh, my ancestors, when they, you know, they were shipwrecked on the coast of Konkan. Mm -hmm. And seven couples, you know, they, they survived, they lived, and afterwards, as the population grew, they spread out in the Raigad district, taking surnames from the villages they came from. But even today, uh, there was just one, we call it Telata Ghana in Marathi, you know, the oil pressing, where mm -hmm. the, you know, the bowler goes round and they press oil. So that was the profession of my ancestors and that could be because they came from Nazareth where there were olive trees and they knew how to you know produce oil from olives and we have synagogues some of them are not active we are trying to turn them into libraries in Raigad district the smaller one as a tribute to the local Hindu community for children but you'll find that most of our synagogues are close to Shani Mandirs over there. Yeah. And even in Panwell, that Ali today is called Ismail Mola, but it was known as the Shanwar Ali, uh, uh, Shanwar Teli, because we would refuse to work on Saturday, oil pressing work. Mm -hmm. But even near the synagogue, there is a Mandir, a Shani Mandir. And you'll be surprised that there is a one day in a year when the neighborhood Hindu community, they come to a synagogue and they are welcomed by us. And this practice goes hundreds of years back. And they go where we have the Ark, the Torah, where the holy books are there. Mm -hmm. They sit there, they stand there and they pray. And even when my friends, some of them are from the Hindu Jewish uh, Association in Mumbai, like uh, Dr. Vinay Dixit and Dr. Amar Bhole and Anay Joglekar, they'll come to the synagogue whenever we have the Malidai, the Elia Nabi, like the Satyara Ren, and they are known to the Ben Israeli communities in Mumbai. So that's kind of relations we have. So it's, it's you know, the, the difference between us and that community is whether it was us or Parsis, we became one with the people, one with their culture, one with their language, you know. And we didn't consider ourselves to be someone who want to take over India. Mm -hmm. We were Indian first and Indian last, Jai. And that's why all the respect, whatever we got from India, uh, we wouldn't have got it in any other country. Of course, I was born and raised in India as well. Um, and um, uh, I was born in Punjab. And growing up in Punjab, you know, the first the recollection I ha have of going to a place of worship is going to a Gurdwara. In fact, Gurdwara is the only thing I knew uh, until we moved to a different part of the country where there were there were actually Hindu mandirs where you could, you could go. So, you know, that kind of culture is uh, is something that you know, we cherish. Uh, uh, before you ask me another question, Jay, uh, uh, I have a good friend by the name of Hanania Goodman from Ashdod, Israel. Mm -hmm. And he has written, a, I mean, he researched it, he worked on it for years. 
and the book is called Between Jerusalem and Banaras, a comparative studies between Judaism and Hinduism. And one, if you read that, you'll see that so much is common between our two ancient people. Of course, Hinduism came much before Judaism, but I think as such, there is too much in common between our two people. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Um, let's talk a little bit about the Jewish community at large. You know, uh, not all the Jewish people in India came as a single, you know, single wave. They came from different places at different times. Can you just uh, relate to us a little bit of that history of waves of Jewish people coming in, you know, from different places? And uh, yeah, I, you know, we have been praying for over two thousand years. Next year in Yerushalayim. Mm. And the name Yerushalayim in Israel is there in all our prayer books. And we were always yearning for it. And uh, soon after the establishment of the state of Israel in 48, uh, the Ben Israel, the Cochinese uh, went to Israel. Baghdadi chose England as their place to be because they were more you know, associated with the British rule those days, and it was easier to get British citizenship. But uh, we mingled very well. We have our own divisions too. Among the Jews, we have the Ashkenazi Jews who come from Europe, and we have the Sephardic Jews, uh, the Jews from Asia and from Arab countries. We were doing very well, and we are still doing very well. We are part of Israel. Uh, we had a member of Knesset some years back. Uh, three of her kids, they fought in the Gaza war and they let down their life. One of Ben Israel by the name of Changaukar, Matan Changaukar, is one of the hostages that is being held in Gaza. Uh, it wasn't easy. For example, in 1965, when I had to uh, participate, I was a cyclist in Maharashtra, and I had to participate in the Olympic, Maccabi, a Jewish Olympic. I asked for a passport from the Indian government, but as you know, the relation between India and Israel were as good as nothing. I was given an Indian passport that is valid for every other country but Israel, not valid for Israel, and I had to fight to get it for Israel. You know, we had the Nehru, who was the friends of Nasser and Tito, and you know, yeah, you know, they, they took India, what do I say? Wish it was Vallabhai Patel, but that's a different story. So, but now we have regular flights, LR direct flights, Air India goes to Tel Aviv, and there's thousands of people are going back and forth, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, India is not far for them, for the 85,000, 90,000 in Indian Jews that are there, they found coming to Mumbai or New Delhi as easy as going to London or wherever. So, yeah. but we are treated very well. We are doing very well in Israel, Jai. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. Um, you know, uh, since you touched on uh, the diplomatic relationships between India and Israel, um, you know, it's actually a very interesting and checkered history of relationships between those two countries, as you as you well know. I mean, India uh, actually did not support the formation of Israel in 1948, uh, but then thankfully they did recognize Israel as a nation in 1950. But then, you know, um, they did not have diplomatic relationships, or at least full diplomatic relationships, for the next 42 years. And, it's only in 1992 that they finally established full diplomatic relationships. And of course, now the relationship could not be better. Um, since you have a unique perspective, having grown up in India, known Indian politics, uh, I wonder if you could share your impressions of what was going on in terms of the relationship between these two countries and why it took so long to uh, you know, warm up with each other. Uh, uh, number one reason was a Nehru. I know he believed in that, you know, a non-aligned movement. And in fact, uh, once Indira Gandhi was in New York uh, to attend the UN and she had a press conference and she was the president of uh, non-aligned movement. And I asked her, I said, Indira ji, now that you are president of non-aligned movement, 
if you have to be in touch with Israel, we will do, do it. She didn't answer. Narasimha Rao was the foreign minister. Then he says no comments. So that was one. And the number two was the policy of appeasement. You had the vote bank in India. They used to vote as a group. And they were worried about whether the Hindu votes were divided in between different parties. These were solid votes. And even if they didn't give votes to Congress, they gave it to Muslim League. They knew that the Muslim League would support them, rule the country. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for that, uh, John. We, we as a you know, non-profit organization, of course, we don't get into the politics uh, uh, side of things. But, but yeah, we see, we see signs of uh, progress. Uh, uh, Jay, before you ask me, just last year, Israel invested $8 billion. They'll be manufacturing chips in India. Uh, uh, the Houthis, they are making a different shipping uh, goods that are destined for Israel. Yeah. So India is helping them, helping Israel by shipping them to Dubai. And from Dubai, uh, they'll land on the port of Haifa for Israel. And 25,000 Indians are on their way to Israel to help them in construction and other fields because we are short of labor. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I, I, you know, we can see the, the relationship between those two countries is really flourishing and uh, we could not be any happier. Let's, uh, let's talk about, uh, uh, once again, the, uh, you know, Indian Jewish community. Now, I was uh, doing uh, some research online to see, maybe get a list of prominent personalities who are Jewish, but perhaps uh, you want to talk about some of them. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, certainly, certainly. And uh, we have done extremely well for India. And I forgot to mention, Jay, our holiest day is Yom Kippur, where we fast for over 24 year hours. And it, our festivals begin on the evening. And we call it Erev Kippur, that is evening of Kippur. And at the end of the prayer, throughout all the synagogues in India, it is a tradition that we still continue. We bless the president of India, we bless the prime minister, the defense minister, and the chief minister of the state where the synagogue is. This is very unique with the Jewish community of India, you know. So that you know it has been said, I think it's called I don't know the exact Hebrew name of the book, that doesn't matter where we live, the rules of the country, you know, they come before the rules of your religion, Judaism. So, you know, we are Indian first, then we are we are Jewish. So, okay, now, uh, answering your question, the best is, and I had the pleasure to, you know, interview him, is uh, General J.F.R. Jacob, best known for his uh, for his role in the Bangladesh war in 1971. He was the chief of staff of the Eastern Command. And then he was appointed governor, I think, of Goa and Punjab. Uh, and I think that was the biggest surrender by any army after the World War II, if I remember. Absolutely. Then I remember reading about, I was a kid, it was a Jeru Dr. Jerusha Girard. Uh, she was the India's first physician, born in Mumbai, uh, and her medical career inspired by childhood incident and received life-saving treatment, so she chose, but she was the first, India's first female. Uh, we had lots of film stars, by the way, and some of them, because I don't know whether the money came from Dubai those days, or that's the way the industry was, some of them had to take the Muslim names to act in movie. Uh, the film star in those days, Esther was Victoria Avram. Uh, there was Pamela. There was one Firoza Begum, and mm -hmm. her real name was Arna Daniels. And uh, of course, David Abram, Chulkar, yeah. the boot polish. Oh, we had him, I think, in, uh, in Ahmedabad. Yeah. We had Parmashri Rubin David, who created all the zoos in Gujarat. Parmashri Miss Esther Solomon, she was a scholar of Sanskrit. And uh, Joseph Benjamin, he was mayor of Ahmedabad. 
before independence, the mayor of Mumbai too, Bombay those days was the Beniz rally. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had, though our ancestors when they came and they were into oil pressing, but once, you know, they came to Mumbai and then they spread out to Delhi and all. We had doctors, teachers. Gujarat was known for uh, for the Ben Israel, you know, for having schools in Gujarat. Yeah. So, you know, uh, basically we spread out into different fields later on. Absolutely. In fact, I was uh, looking at the list uh, uh, yesterday and the first entry was first Miss India and she was a Jewish uh, young lady. That's right. I forgot mm -hmm. to mention God dear Ramad. Yeah. And, uh, you know, famous painter of international fame, Amrita Shergir. It was news to me that she was also uh, a Jewish Jewish lady. So I think it's it all speaks to a community that basically called India home and became part of its culture and uh, you know participated in all aspects of the society. It's, this is this is exactly how uh, a community you know uh, sh you know communities should live. I agree with you. I think that, that's why maybe that's one of the reason Jai that we never heard of any you know problem between the Hindus and Jews and Hindus and Parsis and Hindus and Christian. I think that that was it. That was it. Okay. I think even after the Second World War, a number of European Jews came to Gujarat and some states in the south, and you know they did well, and then they moved on to Israel or other countries. So okay. India has given refugees to them, mm -hmm. uh, to so many, so many other people. Absolutely. So speaking about India as a refuge, um, uh, I think it's a you know it's an interesting theme theme to explore. Um, I mean, it's been a refuge uh, for many different communities for a long, long period of time. I mean, India is one of the most diverse countries that I know of, uh, and I've traveled uh, pretty much all over the world in, in, in my you know, uh, working years. Um, we just talked about, of course, the Jewish people uh, coming to India for almost two, maybe 2,000 years ago, and, uh, and, and they kept coming in different waves over time. And Zoroastrians, uh, you know, who are called Parsis uh, in, in India, they came in the 8th century when they were uprooted by Islam from Persia. Um, That's right. You know, now called Iran. And Baha'is also came in the last uh, two centuries, also uprooted from Iran, uh, you know, for being, I guess, different aspect of Islam that is not acceptable to the traditional or fundamental Islam. So there, and, and there is even a story of some, you know, Polish uh, refugees who came to India during the Second World War, and they were, you know, taken care of, and ultimately they went back and have they had great things to say about their hosts. You know, this is this is, these are all very heartwarming stories. Then we have two communities who came as aggressors. So you know, obviously it's Islam and Christianity. They came as aggressors, and for the most part. They have remained so. And, uh, you know, the conflicts continue on to this very day and are affecting, uh, you know, the social life. Now, Jewish community is not unfamiliar with this contentious relationships with these two religions. I was wondering if you would like to share your thoughts on what is different about these two religions that make them so difficult to live in. We have our share of the problem. Just the way you have Ayodhya, uh, we have the al Aqsa Mosque that was built on a Jewish temple. So, you know, where Avram, he goes to sacrifice Isaac, and that was the place. So, you know, I mean, wish we could regain it, but it doesn't look like. Uh, you see, if I refer to it as we want, whereas the other communities, they want to live in peace, which is their main objective. I think the objective of the other community, as they say in Urdu and Hindi, Kaum Badana Hai. They have to increase their number. They don't care whether they'll be able to give enough education, food, 
or you know a roof on the top but for the time being the main aim of this this community is kom badana hai to increase so that that's the problem that is facing both the hindus and the jews too Absolutely. and uh, and the other thing is the gaza war uh it's a pity when i see some of our hindus in the usa joining the pro palestinians because they don't understand the gaza war was between israel and the palestinians over here it has turned into a jews was in the islam so today the islam are fighting the jews god forbid if they beat us up and the victor the next will be some other religion that they will be fighting to the the aim is to spread throughout the world see england france other european countries and what's happening with here michigan and other places they are taking over jai so our people have to understand they have to rethink before supporting pro islamic movements yeah um as you know um you know uh indian americans are not a monolithic uh, society there are many many different uh, uh groups there are many different uh, ideologies anyone who has spent any time understanding october 7th event you know it it it, it you know it takes a lot of i don't know what but to to then support those who who are perpetrators of that atrocities that's right but our job is to educate you know people on what the facts are but jai jai we live in a world i'll tell you well, one thing is we tend to forget that's the human nature so today when we see 28000 palestinian dead we tend to forget how it all started the number two is whether it's jews hindus or even some others we have been brought up our education our culture our training we won't go on the road we won't yell shout beat to support our cause so the most we will do is to educate in a very you know professional way in a very respectable way and these days those things don't work jai only the ones who can go on the road in thousands you know they'll have the voice heard it it's a pity but that's true jai yeah we are living in the age of narratives you know uh, yeah. anyone who can build a narrative whether it's based on facts or not is uh, that's it they are the ones who are heard that's uh, it but uh, it's unfortunate but that's that's the world we live in uh, john and i guess we just have to make our peace with it and uh, do the best we can that's it yeah uh, so i have one uh, this is a bit sensitive uh, from the jewish uh, perspective i hesitated to ask this but but i think it's important that we talk about it. and that's the topic of swastik as you know now swastik has been seared into the western minds as a symbol of hate and recently uh, attempts have been made to to ban it in some of the jurisdictions and yet it is a symbol of good will good luck a sacred symbol for not just hindu community but many many other ancient societies now i know a lot of lot of jewish people actually do not know the history of swastik so they uh, they react uh, sort of instinctively to it as a hate symbol you know someone like you who has uh, taken time to understand these things i like you to share your perspective on this subject i can say a lot about it number one is the need to educate the jewish community in fact and one way of doing it is in all states over here especially in the us we could form hindu jewish friendship leagues you know which will celebrate each other's festival most of them fall on the same time and you know through that we could educate you know jewish community the educated community like the hindu community here it won't be difficult what happens is when something like that there are another party that is more keen on you know seeing that there are differences between the two they make sure these things they come on facebook on yahoo everywhere 
they take advantage of it. There's a very nice person by the name of Professor Nathan Katz in Florida, from Florida International University. Yes. He has written a lot about it, about the differences between the swastika Hindu and the one that we had. We could form a committee, we could take him, you know, within our group and efforts have to be made because it's not so easy to make anyone understand that it is the same and how it differs a little, you know, even in shape. It can be done and I think we have a occasion coming right now, Jay. We have the Holi and the Purim falling on the same day, 23rd of March, maybe Sunday is 24th. We could start a function here, bring the Hindu Jews together. We could, you know, one of the topics to be discussed will be this. We'll make sure from my side, whatever I can support, because I've got lots from India, lots from Hinduism, you know, we owe a life to your religion. Whatever you support, you need, I'll be more than willing to give you in press or within the Jewish community here. But we have to start somewhere. It's important. Uh, John, I fully agree with you. We need to take opportunities to bring these communities together in close proximity, talk to each other, understand each other's perspectives, festivals, traditions, way of life, and so on and so forth to develop people-to-people -people relationships and also understanding of uh, traditions. By the way, uh, uh, Nathan uh, Katz is someone that I, I know quite well. Uh, okay. respect him a lot, indeed. And in fact, uh, we were both panelists on on a recent uh, webinar. Uh, that, that I was, see, I see. Yeah, yeah. And, and I would love to, in fact, I would love to, uh, you know, have a conversation like this with him uh, down the road as opportunity arises. Uh, but but he is a he's a you know great scholar uh, Jewish scholar but also scholar of Hindu traditions. And that's right. That's right. It's, it's absolutely marvelous when you when you talk to him how he you know he can relate the two traditions uh, uh, in so many so many different ways. It's, it's it's always a pleasure to 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 listen to him. Before we close this conversation, you know, you talked about you know Jewish community is doing well here, educated, and so is Indian community. You know, both communities have done well wherever they have gone. Do you have thoughts as to why these communities have thrived in spite of coming with basically empty pockets? Sometimes, you know, in the early, I think, 1980, 81, I used to Jay, walk, uh, we used to live in Queen for a year, we lived there and I used to walk and, you know, get off Fifth Avenue, walk to the New York Public Library, the research, 42nd and 5th. And I used to see the shopkeepers there, newspaper, you know, Indian, mostly Gujaratis and this and that. Mm. And then when I studied that, I said, when Jews came from Europe over there, that's the business they took. They went into, they would sell newspapers because they didn't know English well. They used to speak, you know, a different language. Then I had friends like, you know, uh, in the Diamond District. And I saw, you know, them dealing, Jewish and Hindus dealing together. I came across readers at the research library and I saw Hindu and Jewish young men and together. And the impression I had that both of our communities, for us, the important thing is family, education, you know, and being together as a loving people. The earlier we bring the two communities together, not only people of your and my age, but even the youngsters, the better it will be, Jay, and you'll have to take the lead. Yeah, well, um, I'm not as young as you might think, actually. But, but <laughs> not am I. <laughs> <laughs> but but thank you, and I think we all, you know, regardless of our age and regardless of our station in life, I think it's this is something that we have to do it for, you know, not just for the community but for ourselves because uh, that's right. That's right. I think uh, I think it's it only makes sense. But you know, you put your finger exactly on the on the reasons. Uh, why these communities are thriving. The, 
the solid rock solid family structure family structure and uh, an emphasis on family education absolutely so those are the two key factors that well success hopefully we are able to retain them as we go forward uh, as our children grandchildren take this center stage it's been a wonderful talking with you uh, it's been very informal very sim- just uh, from the heart conversation and uh, i loved it i hope you enjoyed as well jai i did enjoy and i must tell that i was the only english boy uh in school who is to go to rss those days uh, you know we used to have shakha in the evening mm-hmm. and uh, they were very particular about being punctual and they would start with you know janagana and you know saluting the flag i would go a little late and then one day the shakha pramukh he asked me why do you always come late i told him i feel the sense of pride when i am by myself uh saluting the indian flag so that spirit in mind will be there till i die jai that's so wonderful to hear uh you know you brought up rss and that's that's a whole new topic perhaps in some other time uh you know that organization is totally misunderstood in the in the western press thank you so much it's been a pleasure namaskar namaskar jai it was a pleasure it was a pleasure i remember this interview and so will i and uh, uh and let's let's work together on creating these opportunities for bringing the uh, two communities together i'll be in touch with you thank namaskar. you namaskar jai namaskar. god bless you take care bye bye